Command and Conquer 1995 video game. So to be clear, this is specifically about the very first game. I'm not going to be talking about all the games in this particular video. You know, Command and Conquer Tiberian Dawn. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no way that I love these games so much that I bought... Because, like, yeah, I... This is the first 10 years of games. This has the first 10 years of games, and also, what is it called? Tiberium War. Now, obviously, it's not that I love these games so much that I bought two separate copies. I bought three. Those are my physical copies. Then I also have the digital copy. I have spent dozens, I guess it must be, overall be in the hundreds of hours playing this franchise. Love it. Have been meaning to make videos talking about them for, yeah, probably as long as I've been doing this. So what is that? 15 years. You know, I keep talking myself back out of it. And finally, I just said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. So yeah, um, I love this game. I love you know, a, a lot of the the entire franchise of, you know, I, let's see, the last one I played was Kane's Wrath, and I'm not making excuses for, you know, some of the last, it's been a while since I played Tiberium Wars and Kane's Wrath, I remember those as having issues, but by and large, this is a franchise I really, really love. This first one does a lot of things right and really sets up a lot of stuff that would later be followed up on. A lot of the things that this one gets really right, they would continue to get really right. I could spend a lot of time, but I'm not going to, on how overall like the interface could be slightly better, you know, compared to some of the other. I'm not sure... This is the oldest real-time strategy game I've played, so I don't know about... I, I know it's not the oldest one that exists. I, it's possible that this was just the norm, but just a few years later, we got stuff like Age of Empires and StarCraft, and where in those, you can double-click on a specific unit, and it'll select every unit that's like that that's on screen in this, Double-clicking on a unit accomplishes nothing. You have to drag the the square across to select units, which by itself, you know, that's still, that's something. But, yeah, there are situations where you really will want to, to quickly select just a specific unit type because some of the units you don't want to march into battle. You know, I could spend a lot of time talking about how the fact that to interact with the world you basically have to use the left mouse button where some of these other games use the right mouse button you know allowing for a little bit more flexibility you know I what I will talk a little bit about one thing that this franchise did struggle with for a while you know really I would say when they finally got all the way past it was generals but, yeah, one thing, I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how hard you try, is the fact that as much as I love, you know, we always, we always appreciated this approach of the, the kind of uneven, you know, the, the two sides, the GDI and Nod sides, do not have access to the exact same units. You know, you sort of have the, you know... One is a bit faster and, and lighter, the other is heavier and slower. They, they didn't, they struggled to, to quite get them to be equally, like, useful in, in battle. There would always be gaps where one side was just, you know, much, much better for, you know, which is, you know, I would say StarCraft did a much better job of, of that, you know. 
in in the first StarCraft, if you're playing as Zerg, you know, if you're fast enough, you can do significant damage to, to Marines, ah, Terrans. Wow, it's been forever since I played Terrans, and especially Protoss. Whereas, you know, if you give Protoss enough time, they're going to wipe the floor with you. And and Terran have that sweet spot in between, you know. But I love the world of Command and Conquer. I they they do this thing where right from the start, it's clearly not quite set in the real world. It's 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 a slightly alternate, you know, it's not quite like fantasy, which I, I understand some other you know, I believe some of the earlier RTS games than this did the, the fantasy thing. This is very close to the real world, which kind of, I, I, you know, there's some fantasy I love, but I love how this does this thing of, it's so close to the real world that we just kind of, every, every little difference really stands out, you know, and yeah, the, the big thing is the, this thing called Tiberium, this you know, substance that is spreading across the the planet and, you know, it causes, like, mutations and it burns just, you know, but it's really valuable. So, yeah, people, you know, it, it leads to this, this conflict over the resource. There's... The opening of a video game is extremely important. It can really hook you, because, you know, if you're going to spend many, many hours on this one game, you know, although, you know, the 90s, mid-90s did not have the huge, you know, today it's an even bigger deal, but, yeah, you know, you got to really hook the audience. And this one opens with what appears to be, like, basically, like, TV, you know, you're, you're watching, there's, like, short clips, like, ads and, and such, and then it goes, you know, you get these little hints of GDI and Nod, and then you choose between the two, and just from right away, there is a, you know, I know later, you know, the, the Westwood later said, ah, oh, it's kind of embarrassing, it's cringy, it's so sincere, it's cheesy, but there's a confidence to it, just, like, it does the Star Wars thing, which I love. It does the thing where instead of like hand holding you and saying, okay, so you know how our world has this, well, this other world has this. No, it's just here, to, you know, jump in, you know, sink or swim. This, you are just in this world because you're not playing as someone from our world, you're playing as someone from their world. So they talk about these things. You know, it's not one of those things where two people are talking and they're saying things that both of them know so that the audience will understand. And there was just something to this. The the fact that you would watch these cutscenes and just try to try to grasp onto what what is going on. Oh, he mentioned that I, I guess that's the thing, and just and these cutscenes, you know, this was in the days of FMV, full motion video, with live action actors and and some like props and such and then they will all, all, often use like green screen and you know by today's standards fairly simple cgi but we ate it up it was wonderful and the the lee the the yeah the head of nod is kane played by joseph d kukin who, uh, crap, it's been forever since I heard, how, how do you pronounce his name again? It does not say on Wikipedia. I, yeah, it's been, it's been a long time since I, but he is so freaking charismatic. You understand how this guy is a cult leader. And they do this brilliant thing where they don't immediately give you him. At, at first, people mention him and the way they mention him it's like holy crap you know everyone at nod is like terrified of the like like they're they're desperate to please this guy 
And everyone at GDI is like, we gotta take this guy down. No matter what we do, he has to be stopped. And it's several levels where this, you know, it's it's this other guy, I believe his name is Seth. At, at Nod, you know, he, yeah, he explains stuff and he's like, he's giving you orders from Kane. And then he starts giving you orders that's like, okay, Kane did not technically approve this. But this is, I, I'm, it's my idea, and I know this is going to work, you know. And then at one point, yeah, um, there's going to be some spoilers. At one point, you know, he's, he's talking about, the, and he's also like, he's, he's like, ah, I didn't expect you to do this well. You're, you're really impressing Kane. This is, this is making me look kind of bad. You're going to rise in this organization. And then, you know, at one point, he... Yeah, he's he's sitting there. He's he's about to give you the mission, and a gun comes into frame right next to his head. Bang! Push the corpse aside. Kane sits down and just briefly says something like, "You know, he started to to get his own ideas. He was going in a different direction than I would." And it's like, you know, holy crap! That's that's just it. You know, there's no. It's not like okay, dude, we're gonna have a to we're gonna have a conversation. You're not gonna like it. No, he just shoots him, you know, and then he then it's Kane giving you these missions, and you immediately understand because he's just he's so unbelievably charismatic. You know, they really understood how important it is for a cult leader to just yeah, and and over the course of the game in these cutscenes, you get storyline without them just sitting down and explaining to you this is what's happening you're seeing like there's one point where Kane like he's he's like manipulating the media you know making you know getting a, a journalist to lie about you know to make GDI look like they're the real bad guys and just yeah I I love that it shows this instead of just yeah, coming out and, and just explaining it to you. You know, there was... People were ready for video games that took the player seriously. You know, the, the uh, there had been a while where, you know, video games either basically had no, you know, almost no lore or, or story, world building, and then there had been a while where it was like, okay, you know, here's here's all of it, just, you know... And, and, yeah, by this point, yeah, we were ready for, you know, I played this when it first came out. And, yeah, just, there's, there's a lot of really great, you know, as, as a real-time strategy, you know, it has the, the, you know, you're, you're harvesting resources, produce, you know, you're, you're building up a base, you know, there's, there's, you know, super weapon, you are, you're training soldiers, you're building tanks and such, and just, yeah, it, despite the fact that by today's standards, it's very simple and bare bones, yeah, somehow it just, like, I, you know, last time I played this was not that many years ago, Honestly, it's entirely possible that I'll sit down and and play it again in the not too distant future. You know, right right now I'm only playing games that I haven't played before. But the the let's see, last time I played this specific game, right, 2017 and, you know, in I want to say 2018 my my wrists got bad, so I had to take a break from from video gaming. So yeah, this this was a game I played 22 years after it first, you know, 22 years after I was still playing it, you know. And I think that might be about what I have. Um, yeah, well, an another thing I, I quite appreciate, you know, overall I do prefer StarCraft, but I'll... I'm almost definitely going to be doing a video specifically on that down the line. One, th so so I'll just briefly talk about some of the things that I prefer about this one. 
where StarCraft, you know, basically you can't you can't attack the the ground in StarCraft. You can attack units, you know, but you can't fire into, you know, where in this game you can and some of the explosions have have this like Ah, what's it called? Like a like a almost a dom domino effect. You know, if you and that's also that's one of the weaknesses of you know because they need weaknesses. Some of the some of the infantry units that are extremely effective against buildings and tanks and planes and such. They're also you know they're carrying like rockets and you know or grenades or flamethrower that sort of thing. So yeah, you know if the the if if a small group of them are are near yes if one of them is is sufficiently injured then the stuff he's carrying will just explode and kill him and if a, a small group of them are are together yeah the the that one explosion can set off all of them you know which obviously forces you to be a bit more careful but they're also very effective if they're standing very close together, you know. So, yeah, quite appreciate that. And it's one of those games where, over the course of it, as you get more and more, like, as yeah, as you build up your base, as you rise up the, the I think, what do they call Technological ladder or something. You know, yeah, you start out just, you know, guys with rifles and such. And, you know, yeah, by the end, it's, it's, you know, these these really, really effective tanks. And, yeah, it's just, it's, they, they do a really great job, you know, building that up. And I think that might be, yeah, and this was, yeah, um, this is one of those games that's, you know, the, the campaigns, you know, both GDI's campaign and Nod's campaign, really really engaging it's also it was fun to play in multiplayer I'm not sure anybody still plays multiplayer but I guess it's possible maybe there's a dedicated fan base still and the let's see yeah the AI you know not always but sometimes very very good and I like how basically Almost every single unit in the the game has like a clear like yeah if you're if you know if you if you're dealing with tanks and you can currently only make like soldiers yeah you know rocket soldiers grenadier that that sort of thing you know if you're you know if there's a plane you need to shoot down you need a rocketeer. And then some, you know, ah, wait, ah, sorry, plane comes later, I believe it's helicopters in this one, but yeah, you know, they, they, there's not really any unit that's just completely impossible to do anything at all about, you know, some of the most devastating ones are also really really slow moving so the other player has a chance to to you know f basically throw everything they have at them and i think that might be about yeah uh the last thing i will mention this is the one of my favorite things about this franchise are the, in in this one he's called the Commando, you know the the one unit who can very effectively gun down, you know, an, an infantry unit that guns down other infantry units, and like sets explosives at buildings and such, and you know obviously, it's very risky to get him near like. A vehicle, especially if it's like a Humvee, you know. But yeah, if you manage to sneak him into the enemy base, he can be absolutely devastating. And yeah, there's just yeah, each each of these games has uh, at least one unit like that, and they're not always you know. Some some of them are very different from each other. 
and I distinctly remember like when a new Command Conquer game came out, you know, you were always excited to see who's the new version of the Commando.